Good morning from the Hidden Farm Road Meadow overlooking Lower Mud Lake. It's my privilege to welcome you to our meditation in the meadow on this beautiful Saturday, May 30th. May the peace of God be with you. Let us take a moment to quiet ourselves in heart, mind, and body that we might be more open to the sacred presence within and around us. I share with you a scripture passage from Psalm 9 from Nancy Merrill's book, Psalms for Praying. Let us be open to what the Spirit is saying to us as a people. Love is a stronghold for the oppressed, a foundation in difficult times. The nations are sinking into a pit of their own making. Into the web which they are weaving, they will be caught. Love will make itself known. The unloving will have to face themselves. All nations that are unjust, for the oppressed will be released, and the hope of the poor will be realized. Arise, O oh love, have your way with us. Let the nations bow before you and ask forgiveness. Let your healing light stream forth. O oh love, let all people commit themselves to your just mercy. As I said, it's my privilege to be here in the meadow in McFarland, with the sun shining. I am blessed to live in a place like this. And yet others find themselves today waking up, not just with the sun shining, but their communities on fire and a darkness that has settled over our nation. Once again, dealing with racial injustice and unease and our hearts cry out for justice for mercy so I share with you this morning a quote from Brian Stevenson's excellent book and I commend it to you if you have not read it or even seen the movie adaption of it just mercy a story of justice and redemption it's an excellent book Stevenson writes Finally, I've come to believe that the true measure of our commitment to justice and the character of our society, our commitment to the rule of law, fairness, and equality cannot be measured by how we treat the rich, the powerful, the privileged, and the respected among us. The true measure of our character as a society, as a nation, is how we treat the poor, the disfavored, the accused, the incarcerated, and the condemned. We are all implicated when we allow other people to be mistreated. Those are words worth our reflecting on this day. And with that, I share this poem by Andy Flaherty. Andy grew up in Cambridge and lives in Chicago and has written some wonderful poems, and I've shared them here. And this one is very appropriate for this day in America when we might just put hashtag justice for George. It's called Temporary Darkness. We are Americans. And this is only a portion of his poem, and I will share the whole of it in a post later. We Americans 
will not be allowed to be more important than our shared humanity. The delusion that because we are different, we are inhuman. Because we are poor, we have no value, is based on fear. A dictator's anger is always a mask. For fear the prodigal son was forced to take off his mask and face his monstrous fear. Or he would have walked through the swamps forever because his was a human truth, not a religious rant, but a human argument. We Americans know that we cannot be light without darkness. So today I will face my famine of spirit. Maybe some of you will do the same. My wish is that we seek truth in our hearts, even when the silence of our meditations hurts, cuts at the fabric of our souls. We are powerful beyond measure and even bruised and battered. We need never again to accept the shackles of an America that is trying to hijack our lives as they have done with our Bibles and beliefs. We are Americans. We know better. We have risen and we will rise again in the darkness and we will forgive. Those who do not understand, we will leave behind the futile musings of why, because we are called to carry the lantern of hope. When the ego of their demigod becomes too heavy a burden to bear, I have risen daily for 60 years in darkness and always, always struggled with the most complex problem of my life, how to love my neighbor as myself. We are Americans, and we must struggle with that question and find a way to heal what is broken. Let us pray. O oh, love, if I have been unkind, unloving, unjust, and acted in ignorance, if I have been unjust to others, seeing my own weakness in them, Forgive me, O gracious one. Have mercy on me, O merciful one. And give me the grace to make amends and to heal the brokenness of our society, our country, our world. That we shall walk together, united, and living in harmony with you, O love of all. Amen. Friends, this day, as people continue to gather seeking justice for George, in the midst of the ongoing racial tensions and injustices that we as a society continue, and I'm a part of that, in the midst of my white privilege to know that there is institutional racism and the systems are not fair, how can we act together to find a way to mend this and to see the sacredness of God in all human beings, to lift one another up? I think as we go forth this day and whatever we are doing, remember this, goodness is stronger than evil and love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness, and life is stronger than death. May the Lord bless you and keep you this day. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace, now and always. Amen.